So my topic is uh, principles of revision THR. So my plan today is just not to cover the theory, which we have heard many times, but give you some practical points on uh, revision THR. So all these steps are very, very important. Uh, first thing is you need a clear idea as to why the HIP has failed. Just because you see something you think has failed or you find some moisturizer somewhere doesn't mean that. Uh, so you need to have a clear idea of why it's failed. Uh, spend some time on it. Now, even if you think there is an obvious cause, you know, maybe some uh, polyvar, et cetera, think of infection as an additional cause. We, you know, all of us have um, been, you know, sort of um, had failures because of this that we didn't recognize that we thought it was a poly issue and we ended up with infection finally. Yeah. The next thing that you do is you have to assess bone loss. Um, it's usually you need to have well done x-rays. Uh, sometimes you need to have, uh, uh, you know, these oblique x-rays as well. Uh, nowadays, uh, we use a CT scan if necessary for uh, assessing bone loss. A 3D printed model we use occasionally to quantify and do some, you know, practice surgery if you need be for the reconstruction. Now, the most important thing is you must have a clear plan for reconstruction. Not that, you know, I just go in and see what happens and put this implant or that implant. You really need to have a plan. Approach, again, very important. And revision surgery, unlike the primary, you need to have extensional options. So in case it doesn't work out, how, how are you going to do about extensional? It's very, very important. Uh, you know, incorporating the previous scars, etc. Uh, implant removal without bone loss is absolutely important. So these days, uh, we believe that, you know, we have tools to uh, remove uh, all the implants in the hip without uh, further bone loss. And one must not uh, take on this without the appropriate instruments, like an explant, for example, because it costs so much additional bone loss. And I think that's not really, I think that is uh, medically negligent if you don't uh, have the proper tools today for removal of uh, implants without then um, once you remove the implant, you reassess the bone loss. So it may not be as you thought earlier, you may need something extra, then reconstruct whatever uh, is your plan. Now you need a backup options like every stage, you may have had, a, you may have planned a jumbo cup, but you may have found the jumbo cup may be not inadequate. So you need all backup options at every stage. So it's a very um, popular adage to say, not having a clear plan is planning to fail as far as revision uh, THR goes. So a quick um, look at how things uh, pan out in on the established side. So Kaprowski classification is the one that we use universally. If they, they, there is uh, no migration is one. The migration less than three centimeters, it becomes a type two. Three types of remodeling are described by Kaprowski, circumferential, oblong, and protrusive type. If the uh, migration is more than three centimeters, that means the columns are also deficient. And we have three A and three B, three A's up and out and three B's up and in. Uh, type 4 Paprovsky is pelvic disc. This is really the essence of the classification. And uh, this should do in most situations. So if you have a type 2, usually these days we reconstruct with the jumbo cup. And if you have a type 3, usually we need a, something extra, just a jumbo cup will not. So jumbo cup would be okay in about 85% of patients in our practice. The rest would need something else. Usually type 3 or type 4 would need something else. So jumbo, te uh, jumbo cup technique, a uh, lot of people have misunderstandings about that. So basically, we're looking at two um, biomechanical concepts. You need to get an AP capture, some part of the posterior bone, some part of the of the anterior bone. But remember that any inanimate object needs a minimum three point. You can have multiple points or a minimum three point. So we need to have a, a three point fixation. So how do we get three point fixation? We start enlarging the uh, the socket. Usually by this time you are running into columns. So now you're relying on columns for support, and that's why the two columns must be intact for you to get. And once you enlarge and you get a three point fixation, you can get a a jumbo cup in. So 85% of revisions are jumbo cup revisions. So that's how we do a jumbo cup revision. So this is the animation. You typically you'll find that the super inferior diameter is much larger than the AP diameter. So you start enlarging the AP, uh, the AP diameter to match the super inferior diameter. At one point it matches, you get a three-point fixation. And you put screws, and these days we like to put screws in the inferior hemisphere as well. Now here's an example. Uh, there are some cups now which have dedicated holes for inferior fixation. The great idea these days to put uh, uh, and this is an example of that. Now remember that unlike primary, high hip centers are not well tolerated. So how much high can you go in, hip, uh, in uh, revision hip? Usually the, the inferior edge of the cup must not be above the teardrop. The inferior edge of the cup is above the teardrop, like in this case, you'll have high loosening rate. So unlike primary, be careful about uh, high hip centers in revision surgery. So, if you, if, so how do you solve this problem? So we have these arguments these days. So when you run out of uh, you know bone, to match the super inferior diameter like that. We find that we're enlarging to get a three point fixation, but by the time by enlarging the AP diameter, you're running out of columns, then it's time to stop. You cannot go on enlarging it. And for three points, then you bust the columns. So what we do is 
we stop short and then the place to get to three point fixation we use the augment so that's how we use the augment these days and uh, of course infield screws are a great idea so two types of augments basically we can use modes of usage we can use intra cavitatory that is the classical mode that we can use or we can use it um, outside the uh, outside the defect like a, you know like a, a buttress augment and this is an example of uh, how we use the buttress this is a common mode that we now use Moving on to the FEMA, again, one, two, and three is divided into A and B based on whether it's greater than four centimeters or less than four centimeters are available, and type four is something. So again, these four centimeters uh, came from, uh, Paprowski was a great fan of the uh, solution stem, and therefore he came up with this four. Now that we don't, almost don't use cobalt chrome stems, we have moved on titanium stems. So this is all outdated data. So we now rely on, can have much less bone. Three centimeters or less is adequate for getting fixation now. Paprowski's classification from 2003, and these are outdated recommendations. These days, the recommendations are a little different. Yeah. So, uh, just to take cement out of the way, today, 2022, there are two roles of cement in revision theater. One is for a cement and cement on the thermal side, and on the established side, they use cement. When you use a large cup and you want to cement the liner with a dual mobility or a polyliner, they use cement, and that's the role of this. So, here is the case where they use the cement and cement revision for this. Now, type one, uh, we, we it's best to use a SROM type device because you know there's the least invasive of the implants available and type four you need to have probably need interlocking screws but majority of revisions are the type two and three where we need to use one of these uh, stems either modular or monoblock so type one ideally it's a srom stem that we are used here uh, srom uh, type one is ideal to use srom and type two and three there's a secondary algorithm whether you can use a monoblock stem or a modular stem so advantage of both monoblock and the models are there so uh, when you find this bone loss is not great, you can use a, a monoblock stem and therefore you can prevent breakage. Here are examples in which we have used monoblock stem. And uh, however, when you find that there's a, you're using an endofemoral revision for a very long defect, then it's probably a good idea to get a modular stem in. And here's an example of that. And when you move on to a Paprowski 4, once you go to the distal diaphysis, you probably need some kind of impaction grafting or interlocking screws. So that is uh, sort of the algorithm that you have on the femoral side. So a good uh, understanding of all these implants, how they work is very important so that you can maximize the advantage of the given situation. So you need to understand all these implants very well. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity. Thanks, uh, Suri.